Welcome back to Weird Stuff in a Can. Today we've got Rabo de Toro. So this is a can of braised oxtail that I picked up in Spain during my recent visit. I can't remember how much I paid, but it's called bull's tail, but it's actually oxtail. It's the tail of a cow, basically. Oxtail is one of those ingredients that used to be considered quite humble and cheap, and then people realized it was delicious, and then celebrity chefs started cooking it, and now it's expensive. Anyway, ingredients. Cow's tail, 70%. Water, vegetables, which is onion, carrot, tomato, and some type of pepper. Corn flour, salt, olive oil, wine, and spices. There's a bit of talk here on the side of the thing about this is cooked in a home style. Um, but it's just a little bit of waffle about how much they care about recipe. So it says three different ways to cook it. So you can just tip it in a saucepan, cook it over a gentle heat for 10 to 12 minutes, or you can cook the can in a bain-marie. I presume you open the, yeah, open the can and then put it in a bain-marie. Interestingly, a bain-marie is a baño maria in Spanish. It's Why don't we call that a Mary bath in English then? Anyway, or in the microwave, which I'm obviously not going to bother. A couple of little things to say about this before we go and open it up. Firstly is rabo de toro. Usually that refers to the tail of a bull, you know, the part at the end of a male cow. But this term is also used colloquially to mean the um, <clears throat> other tail of a bull. The other thing is obviously that this is probably just oxtail. This dish used to be traditionally made from the tail of a bull from a bullfight, but the demand for it is such that these days that tends to be just made from cow's tail. It's made from oxtail from the process of producing other cuts of beef. Right, let us have a look at what we've got in a box here. So it's a can in a box. Unmarked can in a box. Okay, it's a pull tab can, but as is my habit and preference, I will open it with a can opener. And there we go. So we've got, uh, got some pieces of meat in there in a very wobbly gelatin. It smells actually quite delicious. Now, Obviously this is meant to be warmed up, but I will, I think, just taste a little bit cold out of the can because that's what I always do. A bit of that jelly as well. So. That is really tasty. So that tastes really rich and meaty and delicious. And actually the spices, the spices and other flavorings are quite subtle, but it's a really robust meatiness in there. Anyway. Off to the kitchen now, and we'll prepare this in a way, hopefully, that is fitting. Now, serving suggestion on the pack has it served with what looks like kind of fried straw potatoes, you know, little shreds of fried potato. I'm not going to try to cook deep fried potatoes here today. I think I'm going to serve this with mashed potato. Not sure how authentically Spanish that is, but that's certainly something that might be served with oxtail here in the UK. I will try and make my mashed potatoes a little bit Spanish as well. Going to use these red potatoes because they're good for mashing, and I am going to peel them because I want to. I prefer mashed potato without the skins in and quite a lot of people have told me that I should try it without I should try it without peeling the potatoes and I've done whenever I've done that I haven't really enjoyed the mashed potatoes as much as I do when the skins are out. Of course people say that most of the nutrition of the potato is in the skin. I imagine there's some truth in that but I've got a varied diet anyway so I don't really feel like I'm missing out on the nutrients that might be present in the skin of the potato. Cut these into smallish pieces so that they will cook comparatively fast. Now I'm going to get my mash going first because these potatoes are going to take a little bit longer to cook than the heating suggestion for the can of oxtail so I'll get them started first. A little bit of salt in there, not much because we will be adding salty things to these when they're cooked. And while that's happening, we'll get the oxtail out in one, almost one, meaty, wobbly block. That's not gonna go on the heat just yet because that's too soon. To make the mashed potato a little bit more interesting, I'm gonna chop up some fresh tips of sage here. Just the really tender little tips of the sage leaves. Chop those up nice and small because they're not gonna actually be cooked except by the kind of residual heat of the potatoes. And some chives, which I'm just going to snip small. I could snip these straight in, but I'm going to 
have them ready so that my mashed potato doesn't have to hang around. Just going to reserve about a teaspoonful of those chives for a garnish. The rest is going to go in the mashed potato. In addition, and to try to make it a little bit more Spanish, I'm going to put some manchego in my mashed potatoes. I have no idea if they put cheese in mashed potatoes in Spain. Perhaps if we've got any Spanish people watching this in possible horror, perhaps they'd care to comment on whether that's a thing that happens in Spain. So, a bit of grated manchego. I reckon that's about right. I've got an egg, a Burford Brown. Beautiful eggs these are. Beautifully deep nut brown eggs with, just look at the yolk in that. Burford Browns always have really golden yolks. I think it's just the breed. A little bit of salt in there because I want this egg to really loosen up. One last thing, which is this beautiful Rosa tomato, which I'm just going to cut in half like that. Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted. I've cut it through the membrane, through the kind of dividing wall there. So in this frying pan, just a little bit of beef fat that I've got, that I saved from when I cooked some minced beef. And then in with those tomatoes. I think I'll put a lid over that just to stop it from spitting everywhere. And over here, I'm going to get this oxtail warmed through now. Now I must try not to break this up too much because the chunks of oxtail are important. Okay, these potatoes, completely done. They can't be picked up with the point of a knife. In fact, they're falling apart now, which is perfect. That's what I want. So we'll just drain those. And while they're still piping hot, I have a good bit of butter in there, salted butter. I reckon that's probably enough. I'm leaving this open so that the steam can come off the potatoes, so the, a bit of water will leave the potatoes here, and that will we've got plenty of things to replace that moisture with. Just check in on stuff over here. The oxtail is steaming, and it is gradually melting down. All of that jelly is melting down. It still needs another minute or two, which just gives me time to sort out these potatoes. So the butter is melted. I'll mash that in. I normally like quite lumpy mashed potato. I like it with a bit of texture. But today I'm gonna try and make it a little bit smoother. Not really the best masher for that, but never mind. And I've said this before, the only way to get mashed potatoes wrong is if you end up with something different from what you expected and hoped for. There is no such thing as the right mashed potatoes. It depends on what you like. So, my sage, my chopped chives, a bit of black pepper, my beaten egg, and I am adding raw egg to potato here but the heat of the potato will cook it. And my manchego cheese. Now we're gonna find that the right implement is a fork. Still a few lumps in there, but you know, I'm okay with that. As I say, I, I like a bit of texture in my mashed potato. Could have passed that through a sieve, could have put it in a food processor, although actually if you put mashed potatoes in a food processor, they sometimes go like wallpaper paste. That's good. Okay, a little taste. A little bit more salt, a lot more pepper. Right, I think we are at the point of plating up. Camera wasn't rolling for the plating up, but here it is. So mashed potatoes, some of that delicious octail. We've got to be a bit careful. There are bones in there. One of my tomatoes, which is cooked and almost translucent. And then just finishing touch. Let's get that to the table and give it a little taste. All right. Well, there it is. I have no idea how authentic this is, but you know, we're doing our best here. So just a piece of that oxtail. I should have got a small bowl for bones. Right, here we go. Interestingly wobbly texture here. There's meat, there's kind of uh, a little bit of, well, I don't know if that's fat or connective tissue or whatever, but let's have a go anyway. Mm. Wow. So oxtail, despite being the tail of the, the cow, it's actually quite muscular and has the most intensely beefy flavour. And do you know what I'm going to say? That gravy with that mashed potato. Mm. It's just amazing. Yeah, I'm happy with that. Gosh, that buttery, cheesy, eggy mashed potato is really rich. Mm. 
I suppose I should try my beef fat tomato. Wow. So I guess this is what you'd call comfort food. It's one of those meals where it's probably not that healthy, although packed with food energy, but it's good in the sense that it makes you feel good. So I've got a little bit of bone there. It's a little piece of bone and what looks like a little piece of that kind of wobbly jelly gristle on that. Let's just try that in the bowl over there. So something you have to eat really rather carefully because there are lots of little bones in here. But super delicious, really rich, really satisfying. And I've got seconds of all of these things in the pan. So I am going to go back for a second helping. That was super delicious, really rich, really tasty, superbly meaty and powerfully delicious. Second helpings, and I am gonna eat the whole lot of this. Well, apart from one tiny little bit. I sometimes don't do the EVA test on some foods because they're too salty or they have things in there that might harm the dog. But there is a little bit of onion in here, but in my judgment, it's so subtle and such a minor ingredient that a tiny little bit of this meat will not do any harm to EVA. So we're gonna see what EVA thinks of oxtail. Come round here. Okay, right, come here. That's it, where everybody can see you. Mmm, oxtail. Can I have a paw? That's lovely, thank you. No, I didn't touch the sides, did it? <laughs> Sorry, that's all there is. So, rabo de toro. Uh, now, I think this might actually be the most delicious thing I've ever opened on weird stuff in a can. A little bit tricky to eat, and it might not be for you if you don't like eating around lots of smallish bones, but really, really intensely beefy. I knew I was expecting that. I've had oxtail before, but there's something about the way they've prepared it this time, especially I think it's the long, slow cooking and probably the canning process as well. Normally when I've had oxtail, the kind of cartilaginous parts of the oxtail are still fairly evident, and you just kind of pick the meat out of the tail. In this case, all of that connective tissue and cartilage had cooked down to a jelly-like stock. Not quite a demi-glace, but certainly in that direction. And that was just a delicious, sticky, savoury, beefy sauce. It was just really delicious. I can't stress enough how tasty this really was. And it's one of the best, if not the best thing I've opened on Weird Stuff in a Can. So, Rabo di Toro, Weird Stuff in a Can on Atomic Shrimp. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you again soon.